So today we're talking about funnels. And so funnels usually is a very kind of complicated topic because people are like, well, what exactly is a funnel? Is And it really is to make it just as easy as possible. It is just a tool that we marketers, and I say we marketers because each of you all are a marketer in your business. We utilize that tool to get people to uh, help us achieve the goals that we've set. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what you need before you start, you jump into creating a funnel. We're going to talk about some goals and then we're going to talk about some uh, three different strategies that you can have when building your funnels around getting clients. All right. So the first thing that you need is an offer. So an offer is just simply what, what, why does somebody care? <laughs> what does somebody care about what you have to say? What, what is it that you have to offer them in terms of getting them to become a lead of yours, getting them to become a client? What's the offer? And then oftentimes most of you all think, okay, well, my offer is my trip. But if you don't have an audience of people to sell to, you need a pre-trip offer. You need a trip that's not directly related not necessarily not related, you need an offer that isn't asking for a sale. So I call that a stranger offer. So we're going to talk about several different offer types that you can consider when building your funnel. But the first thing that you need to do is you need to have an offer. But really, before you even have an offer, you need to have a goal. So what is it that you're trying to accomplish? And to me, there's really only three accomplishments that you should be going after in your business. One, that's to attract new people to your business, so strangers to your business. The second is to keep in constant communication or engagement with the people that know you. So either with the strangers that you just met or acquaintances in your business or your clients. So that's really what I refer to as relationship. You were constantly building relationships, constantly engaging with your audience, with your community, with your clients, with the people that are new to you. And then the third reason to do anything when it comes to marketing is to get a conversion. And that conversion can be in the form of hard, right? Where you actually get a sale or it can be soft where you're actually getting a lead. But at the end of the day, the whole purpose of a funnel is to facilitate a transaction. And the question I have for you all is what state are you in, in terms of transaction? Are you trying to get more leads to your business? Are you trying to make just sales? And if you start with sales and you don't have people who know you, that's the wrong place to start. So we always want to make sure that you're starting at the right place or when you create an offer or a funnel that you have a clear identification of what the goal is. And so for today's training, we're going to be focused on getting leads, right? So these are people who are not necessarily familiar with you, or maybe they're familiar with you and they haven't engaged with you recently. The whole objective is to get leads so that you can ultimately sell. How many of you guys are in that state where you need more leads in your business, more people that know who you are, why you're the bomb.com and what you have to offer? How many of you guys need leads in your business? Always. That's right. I always need leads in my business. Frankly, there isn't a day that I go by that I'm not trying to get new leads. And I do most of it on autopilot. Because I'm, I'm training, I'm going on trips, I'm hosting, I'm, I'm working with clients. So getting leads needs to be something that's a, sort of an after, it's not necessarily an afterthought, it just happens without me. Like I don't, I don't want to actively have to participate in the event of getting leads. So what we do is we create funnels that help get leads for us because we set them up once and that's it. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. All right. So everybody is interested in getting leads and you're interested in wanting that. So if you're interested in getting leads, what are some of the offers that you have to get leads? Do you guys already have stranger offers that you utilize in your travel business? Do you have other ways that you get people learning who you are? 
I got one from IG and was so shocked. That, see, just by virtue of being on social media is definitely a way to get leads. And if you create that presence, you create that reason to connect by having a social platform that makes it interesting for your prospective clients to want to click, that's a natural organic way to get leads. And so the offer is so important. And you can just, and I tell like all of my clients, one of the best things that you can do in your business is just get your social media platforms inviting to your ideal client. Make sure that it represents who you stand for, why you're the bomb.com and why someone would click. And like Lisa, you could just be getting natural leads just by virtue of someone finding you. But an offer, having a physical, and, and when I say physical, I mean an actual thought out offer that says, hey, gets people to raise their hand and say, hey, I want that. Or yeah, I'm interested. That's what we're going to talk about are the offers. The second thing that you need when it comes to building a funnel after you have an offer and you know what your goal is, is you need a tool to broker the deal. I like, I think, I think of, I think of all of this in, in the traditional sense of deals uh, of sales, which is every person that comes into my environment or comes into my web, so to speak, it's a deal. It's a deal in the making. It may not always lead to a sale, but it's certainly a step closer to the in the sales process when I've got them to raise their hand and say, yes, they're interested in the offer that I have to have. And this is what you want. You need tools that allow you to facilitate that transaction in a smooth way. Nobody really has time to be sitting at their computer waiting on Instagram for somebody to send me a message. I don't have time to look at my email, you know, my email repository and see what new leads that I've got every single day, right? I don't have time to sit on my Facebook page and see who's replying to all of my Facebook posts. So a funnel really just is a tool that helps you get that transaction quicker and in a consistent way without you having to stand and hover over it, right? So when we all owned a barbershop, you know, one of the things that we did in the morning is we, you know, we opened up the doors of the barbershop and we waited for people to come. And we actually had to handle the transactions in person. We have an online business, you, you can't just be hovering around, you get stuff to do, right? So effectively what we do is we create this environment for which we can respond to the transactions as they're occurring in real time. And that's really what a funnel will do for you. And then the third thing that you need when it comes to your funnel, and really when it comes to any offer is you need a way to promote the offer. And so I, you will, you will often hear me say, do not create a thing without promoting the thing and don't promote the thing without tracking the thing. And so when it comes to creating an offer, the very thing that you've got to be thinking about is how are you going to get eyes on the offer? So if you create trips and you don't have a promotion strategy, it's probably not going to sell as well. If you do have a promotion strategy, if you, if you have the more eyes that you can get on whatever it is that you're doing, the more likely you're going to get the hit the goals that you have. So traffic, understanding who's going to be the receiver of your offer, how they're going to see it, right? Because how many times have you built something and people don't respond? How many times have you posted something on your social media page about a trip and you've got likes, but no buys? How many times have you posted stuff on your business page and people have seen it maybe, but they haven't seen it? When you look at like your views, you only had a few people that reviewed or maybe even a few people that looked or or even responded, right? How many times do you send an email and people don't open the emails? So traffic and people actually seeing the offer is as critical as the offer itself. So making sure that you have a really strong way that you promote and that you promote it consistently is going to be the key for you getting the hitting the objective that you want. All right. So what we're going to talk about is the goals. We talked a little bit about the, what the goals are. There are really three goals. You're always going to hear me talk about these three goals. Your goals are to attract, relate, and convert, right? So whatever offer that you have, it needs to be wanting to hit one of those three goals, either attract new people to you, to relate to them, 
connect with them, engage with them, or three, you're going to actually facilitate the transaction. You're going to convert them into a lead, get them into your web, your, you know, your business web. You're going to ask for the sale, get their money, and then fulfill on the promise. And then once you do that, then it's all about fulfillment. So now let's talk about these three different strategies. And I'm going to share my screen. Um, so for those of you who are members of our, all right, can you see my, can you see my screen? Perfect. Lovely. All right. So what I've done is I've created these three strategies that we're going to talk about really around getting leads and how the best to do that. The first way is and a lot of you may already have these. Maybe you have digital products. Maybe you think, what is a digital product? I don't know what that is. It's simply, it's something that you give to someone in a digital format. So that's either via a download, that could be a document, and you deliver it to them um, in through through the internet or through the web or somehow like that. It's not a physical product. It's something that they, it could be, it could turn into a physical product because they'll download it and it'll be a physical piece of paper if they print it. But your whole concept is a digital artifact that you create. It's an asset that you will create in your business. So I've got three offer ideas for you to consider when it comes to getting leads through digital products. Now, First thing is, is who are these products designed for? They're usually designed for people who are new to you. They're not familiar with your brand. They're not familiar with your agency. They're not familiar with you as the person of influence. They don't really know anything about you. So I always say when it comes to building these digital products, really take some time to create an asset that really represents and wows your people. So I spend the effort on the graphic, so the cover page graphic, I spend effort on if it's a PDF or a checklist or a document, I spend, I spend some extra time and effort and sometimes money on the creation of that. So I may create the content, but then I may go over to Fiverr and actually have somebody create a really graphically pleasing PDF because this is a representation and it's the first time that somebody is going to see who you are. So the first idea is an ebook or a travel guide. These are really great um, assets to create in your business, particularly if you're creating signature trips or signature itineraries, creating a travel guide or an ebook around that is a really good way for you to talk about your expertise around that destination, really talk about the pros and cons or benefits of a person going to that destination and really utilizing um, imagery through the form of images and also video to have your prospective clients see themselves at that destination. I really do like eBooks and travel guides. And the great thing about these, these are things that you don't have to create oftentimes yourself because we've got suppliers and partners that really do provide great graphics, great information about the brands that we are selling for them. So you really can leverage a lot of the content that your suppliers have available to you. An online course. Now, many of you may be like, well, I'm not a teacher. Well, of course you are. You are more of a teacher than you think you are. And so the knowledge that you have, it, you don't have to become a teacher and a coach like I am, but just packaging up your information into a course. I think I just did a training on how to create a digital course last week. So you can check out that training, but just actually packaging up your, your knowledge into a simple course and offer Offering that as a way to get leads is perfect. So I've got, I'm, I'm looking at one of my clients, Lisa, and she just did a wedding. And I know that she learned a whole bunch in doing that, that wedding, right? And so for someone who wants to do like, like do a destination wedding, packaging up those steps and giving that as a course for somebody who's thinking about planning their own Destination wedding is a perfect example of how you can package up that information and create a very simple course for people and you get leads from that way. 
a travel planning toolkit. So same example for a wedding destination, anyone who's, who's planning, let's say a girl's trip or a group trip, a family reunion, creating a planning toolkit for them, things that they need to take into consideration when picking a destination, when picking a travel advisor, when picking the accommodations, activities, when particularly when you're dealing with multi-generational um, attendees to a group. These are all great things that your prospective client is going to be interested in knowing about because they probably haven't thought about them. You know, they're thinking about the fact that they want to go out of town, but even though you as the travel advisor are going to do all of the heavy lifting for them, there's still decisions that they need to make. So giving them the toolkit to have those decisions already made when they meet with you is a perfect way to package up that um, package up your information and then get people to download that and get leads from that. So a toolkit is really a good idea. I love toolkits based on different types of travel, right? So a toolkit for cruisers, a toolkit for your first trip to Dubai or Bali or wherever your destination is leading you. There's just very specific things that you can include in that toolkit when um, a prospective person is thinking about going to that they don't know about that you know about because you've been there or you've sold it before or even if you're learning about that destination just considerations so um a toolkit is really a good idea and so making it a, as a downloadable is really good for you as a offer that you can create for getting new leads now the second strategy is really around events i am a very big event person i love hosting events because it's got to start and an end so I can start it and then I can finish it and then I can invite people and I it, it just has all of the perfect recipe for a funnel. And so here are a couple of different event ideas that you can use for your travel business. So the first one is a webinar or on a travel trend. So you know, uh, I went to Dubai last year twice. And to me, I keep saying Dubai is the new Caribbean. Um, you know, a lot of people are traveling to Dubai and there are new destinations. And, and let me like, rephrase that, not new, new to me, but destinations that maybe your audience hasn't ventured out. Maybe it's a new destination that you're venturing out doing a webinar on the trends that you are seeing in the travel industry around that destination is really a great way to get people to attend and also get them out of their comfort zone. Maybe it's there on their bucket list, right? So creating a webinar around a destination and inviting people to learn about that destination is also a really good way to do that. So then this is a really, you know, I had forgotten about this whole travel fair. We as travel advisors, we attend travel fairs, right? We uh, do the travel, tra I don't know if you guys do the travel and uh, travel trade show that happens. I, I, I've been to the Dallas one, they hosted here in Atlanta as well. And I think they do it all over the United States. And so what's, gr what's really great about that travel show great and bad is it both has travel advisors and it also has consumers. Years ago, I met a travel advisor who hosted his own fair every year. He actually hosted, uh, he got local, local, um, local uh, companies um, partnered with them along with travel suppliers and hosted his own fair. And so who's to say that you cannot do the same thing? If you are an events person and you like this, this is a perfect opportunity to get your favorite suppliers at a venue in person. You could also do virtual events, a virtual travel fair where you get, so let's say you specialize and I'm picking on the wedding destination because it's a very easy one that people really can sink their teeth into. But uh, for wedding destinations, holding a travel fair, even a virtual one or in person, small doesn't have to be like, you know, thousands of people, but you host it and then you're inviting, you're targeting people who are interested in wedding destinations and you invite them to it. 
One thing that just came to mind is like a multi-generational. I've got a lot of clients who are specializing in multi-generational group travel. And so really having a fair around that, not only the suppliers that cater to families, but doing local, like getting local, like I would get out there on the streets and have local vendors. And so I'm thinking of uh, people who have restaurants, right? So they could do a pre, pre, uh, pre before they go uh, dinner before they leave on their trip. So I would have a, a restaurant, complimentary um, businesses, small businesses, invite them to your fair because they would love the opportunity to showcase too. So it's really a win-win when it comes to a partnership. This is a little bit of a larger effort for you. Obviously it would take a little bit more coordination, but the, the general, the advisor that I met that did this, he hosted a fair, I want to say once a year, he said it was how he ran his entire business. That is how he got all of the leads in his business. And um, I, I, I completely forgot about that until I put this together. So having your own travel fair does not have to be just for suppliers. We are in touch with suppliers. So you would be surprised how many suppliers would love the opportunity and would also probably, if you did it far in advance, would do some marketing dollars towards that if you pitch that idea with them. So having your own virtual travel fair that's around your niche and around your client base is a really great way to get leads as well. And then I've sort of already talked about this destination spotlight event, which is I've combined that really with the webinars. So webinar is really around travel trends that are going on in the industry. And then a webinar focused on a specific destination is also really a good idea. So if you, I think somebody said out there that they're doing Austria, if you're doing Austria, I would definitely do a destination event around Austria. And just by the confusion, I think I actually did a webinar and the confusion between Australia and Austria and really kind of highlight why Austria is just as good and if not better than Australia, which is probably what a lot of people know. So destination spotlight events, if you are, if you have a signature destination that you do in your travel business, hosting regular destination spotlight events to get strangers um, interested in that destination is something that should be a part of your ongoing promotion strategy. Very simple to put these together. You just decide, like the first thing I tell everybody is decide the date. That's the hardest thing is commit to the date and then get the commitments from the other uh partners that you're doing that they can abide by that date or that they can accommodate that date. And then it's all about promoting the event after that. All right. Strategy number three is really around appointments. And so we are a sales organization. Again, you may not think of yourself as a sales organization, but creating a funnel that's really focused on getting appointments for you. So if you do consultations, maybe you are in the fit space and you do consultations, maybe you're in the group space and you want to you want to qualify people into your group space that you're doing. Maybe it's a high-end group and you want to qualify. Right? Creating a funnel around appointments to get leads interested is really a good idea. 15-minute uh, appointments, I would not do anything longer than that because these are really qualification appointments. But the first one is to do a free travel consultation around either a general consultation or a specific consultation around a destination that you're doing. Now, you do, I, this is 30 minutes, but I would really keep it to 15 minutes. I would plan for 30 minutes, but I would book the appointments for 15 minute increments because you don't want, you know, you don't want to like, you're not, you're not designing the trip for them. You're not holding a full on um, design session with the client. This is really an objective. The objective of the appointment is for you to qualify them, see if they're a right fit, see if you can help them. Um, make a decision about a trip that they want to plan so that you ultimately can be their choice for designing it. And then that we've got the actual trip planning strategy session. So I am a, as you all, and if you are new to me, and this is the first time you've heard me speak, um, I will tell you that I am a big proponent of charging for designing and planning uh, trips. And so 
to do a free planning session where you actually design a trip. Not a big proponent of that, but certainly doing a free introduction planning, preliminary planning strategy session. Absolutely for that. We are um, what I want to what, what I want you to equate yourself to is a doctor, a professional person providing services, doctors, lawyers, consultation. I'm getting, I'm getting ready to do a garden design. I'm getting a, a complimentary planning session to do a garden design, right? But I guarantee you, they're not going to do a full on design, implement and give me all of the information for free, right? Nobody is going to do that and neither should we. So I'm off my soapbox there, but really a trip planning strategy session hosting, you know, offering that at a discounted. So let's say our going rate is 250. If you do a discounted rate for that to get leads, that is certainly a strategy that you can deploy, giving it away for free. If you are going to do a planning session and you do it for free, I would certainly call it an introductory, an, an, an introduction planning or a preliminary planning session. This is not a full on planning session. And then I like this whole idea of a vacation audit. Um, we actually had a service that was called a plan at your time off service. And this sort of goes in line with this is where you actually take a look at your client's past vacations and you talk to them about ways that they can improve the process, right? And one of those ways could potentially utilize a professional in the planning and uh, orchestration of their trips. But really the objective, again, remember the objective of this appointment is to get leads, is to get people who get become familiar with who you are and what you do. So having them talk to you about their past vacations, what went well, what didn't sort of do a lessons learned and give them a few tips is certainly a good way for them to introduce you to uh, have you introduce yourself to them as a professional. And then you've got leads and they're on your list. And then once you get them on their list, you continue the engagement conversation. Now, this is nine different strategies, right, that I've given you in terms of built getting leads into your travel business. So don't worry if you didn't capture this. If you are a part of our Travel Boss community, you will get this document along with the replay. I'm going to put in the uh, chat right now if I can find the chat and see where all of my stuff is. Let me stop the share and let you know where in chat you can sign up and become a Travel Boss community member. If you go to https dot or online travel boss com forward slash member, you will get uh, signed up to our free community where you'll get access to our replays and any of the free resources that we have. So you can go ahead and sign up there. And then the last thing I wanted to talk to you about before we go is if you are a member of Travel Pro Suite or you're interested in becoming a Travel Pro Suite member, um, I'm going to talk to you now about how we can help you specifically with Travel Pro Suite in building the funnel. So let me share my screen again and um, show you kind of exactly where we have. So the funnel structure is really very simple. A funnel is just a collection of pages with the very specific objective. So in the situation that we've talked about today, our funnel's goal is to get leads, right? So it's really a four-step process. The first thing is, is that we'll have an opt-in page that will present the offer. So if we're doing a any one of these options that we have, the sales page objective is to convince the person that they want the offer that we are doing. So any of these offers that we decide, we want a sales page that's going to talk about the offer and give the use the reader of the sales page a reason to want to click and get it to take advantage of it. So the first step is building a sales page. Travel Pro Suite allows you to build that sales page and create the compelling reason why somebody will want to take advantage. 
The second step in your funnel is the transaction step. It's how you're going to either collect the contact information, collect payment, get the registration to your event, whatever the transaction is, that's what the second page goal is. It's to get that contact information so that you can then ultimately deliver the offer or get their money so that you can deliver them the next steps to the trip. And then the third step is always a confirmation. No matter what you do in your travel business, when you do a transaction, you want to make sure that you confirm that the person has completed the step. So we always do a confirmation page that just says, hey, thank you. We've received your, you know, your request. Check your email. Thank you. We've received your order fill out the travel pro, you know, the travel profile, whatever the transaction, step three is always about confirming that they have done the action that you wanted them to do. And so what we always do is we always have a page, a web page that identifies or lets them know or a message that confirms. And then we immediately send them into an automation. We will do a collection of email and text type of automation but literally you could set up a phone call, like you can automatically dial a phone number in the automations that we do based on if that's the route that you wanna go. So the third step is all about confirming the action that the client took. And then the fourth and last step is the follow-up or delivery. So if someone is buying, you wanna deliver the thing that they've purchased. If they've given you, they've opted in to get your stranger offer or register for your event, you want to deliver it. You want to, you want to give them what they signed up for. So that's the second part of the transaction. So there's always some sort of follow-up that you're doing. We handle all of our follow-up via email. We do email and a combination of text. We deliver digital products via email. We also deliver online co courses. We deliver the login credentials, access to the course via email. All of that delivery is done via email. Even when it comes to our trips, we deliver a confirmation via email that and let them know what the next steps are. So the follow up, I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the follow up, the money is always in the follow up. If your goal is to get leads and you want to ultimately convert them into paying clients, it's going to be in your follow up game. How do you follow up with them? How do you keep the conversation going? And then ultimately, how do you promote to them in the future? So follow-up needs to really be a part of all of your steps. Travel Pro Suite can help you with all of those things. We can help you with the presentation, the sales pages, and the funnel pages to present your offer, order forms checkout pages, forms, surveys, so that you can collect information, registration pages, the automation associated with your web pages, emails, we can do that as well. And then your emails and all of that, we can handle email automation. Now, 30 minutes is not enough time to show you all of those features. We're actually going to do some follow-up training this month that actually walks you through many of these steps in terms of building out. If you are a Travel Pro Suite member, we already have training that teaches you how to do the funnel setup for particularly your travel request and your group trip. We will be offering opt-in training this month as well. So if you're not a Travel Pro Suite member, simply go to onlinetravelboss.com forward slash TPS. And if you are already a member and you'd like to join our affiliate program, you'll be able to resell Travel Pro Suite and make 30% monthly recurring income. I look forward to working with you. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. The time is now for you to simplify how you operate your travel business. Bye for now. If you have any questions and you'd like to join us for open office hours, we're starting right now. Go to sundaygardener.com.